comment what is it miss i'm sorry to disturb you sir when you've only just returned home but i had to talk to you i see well i know i should be used to it by now sir but there are things which flesh and blood cannot stand and i'm giving in my notice again I know I've threatened to leave and go back to London time and again, sir, but this time I've made up my mind. I can't go on any longer. Have you thought, nurse, you may not have to go on very much longer? I've been thinking that for the past five years, sir. And things don't change, except for the worse. You must understand, things cannot be arranged overnight. This place is very remote. Well, that's part of the trouble, sir. I'm still young, and shut away here, I feel as if, the, as if the years are just slipping away. If it's a question of money. It's not the money, as you know, sir. I'd work for far less in a place where I felt I was appreciated. But here, well, it's... it's... Mary, where have you been? I thought I told you not to leave this room. Well, I did leave it, and I'm glad I did, because just as I was coming back, I heard somebody crying. You didn't hear anything of the sort. Just you wait till Mr Craven knows what you've been doing. He'd better get you a governor, same as he said he would. You're one that needs someone sharp to look after you. Now stay where you're told to stay, or you'll find yourself locked up. hear somebody crying and now I've heard it twice somewhere in this house there's a child who cries and cries all by itself in the east wing I told Miss Mary as he'd like to get a letter it's first on he ever had can you read what she's written I told her to write in printing aye so Packets of flower seed, and, and a spade, and a rake, and an oar. Aye, I remember seeing them little sets of tools in shop at Thwaite. Oh, they look good and strong. They cost a lot, though. I've got money here. Mr Craven told Mrs Medlock to give Miss Mary a shilling a week, pocket money. My, that's riches. That's what I told her. Riches won't buy that little lass happiness, though. Still, it was a nice idea of yours, Martha. And if she doesn't plant nut but parsley and radishes, she'll dig and rake away, and that should take her mind off herself for a while. I'll be going to Thwaite, then. Tell Miss Mary I'll bring things up to man in a day or so. You'll have time for a cup of tea before you go, Martha. Oh, that'll be grand, will it? Oh, you know, I can't help fretting about Miss Mary. I do hope everything's been all right while I've been away. Even now, Elizabeth Allen can spell better. <laughs> Is Mr Craven getting a governess for Miss Mary? Oh, I don't suppose he's troubled to think of out like that. She's had governesses in India, she told me, but they never stayed long. Hey, it's not right the child shouldn't have a book. What does she do all day? Well, she just wanders around the gardens when it's fine and mopes in a sitting room when it's wet. Yeah, that's no life for a child. I wanted Mrs. Medlock to let her come home with you and play with children. Well, she said no, I suppose. She had her reasons. But I'm not giving up. John? Yes, Miss Mary? Drop my skirt. Please. It stopped raining. Ah, uh, it storms over for a bit. Sometimes it goes off in a night like it, pretending it had never been here and never meant to come again. I'm glad. Is my uncle still here? No, he went away an hour ago. You ready for your breakfast now, miss? Yes. Uh, thank you. When will Martha be back? Sometime this morning. It's a long walk over the moors.
she didn't have to go now. It's a whole month to wait for you come again. Time will soon pass. Money for peddlers than those that. Lovely morning, isn't it? Any brooms or brushes today? No. Any combs or laces or cottons or ribbons? No, I'm afraid not. I have four places to put every penny as it is. Mother, he's got skippy rows, the red and blue angles. Hey, stop, mister. Hi, missus. How much are they? Tuppence. Mother says to me, Martha, she says, they brings on their wages like a good lass, and I'm just going to spare tuppence out of them to buy that child a skipping rope. Oh. But what's it for? For? You mean they, they haven't got skipping ropes in India? For all they've got elephants and tigers? Oh. Mm -hmm. I'll show you what it's for. Right. Big penny off. You just watch me. I'll show you. Here. Sit. Right. Ooh. Mother reckoned this would be the sensiblest thing as you could have. She said you to stretch your arms and your legs and put some strength in them. to be able to skip an hundred, but I want as fat as I am now. It looks nice. <sighs> Do you think I could ever skip like that? Well, oh, you can run along into the garden and try. You won't skip an hundred at first, but if you practice, you'll soon mount up. out of your wages that bought the skipping rope. Thank you. <laughs> eh, that a queer old womanish thing. If there'd been our Elizabeth Ellen, that'd have just give me a kiss. Do you want me to kiss you? Eh, <laughs> not you. If you'd been different, perhaps I'd want to the cell, but thou ain't. Run off into the garden and play with your rope. for a bit sometimes, when they can get no one better. Eh, that's been reddening up the waistcoat and polishing the feathers. <laughs> Courting time's coming. <laughs> what are the eyes for? Can't to see a body. When stop? Look what I can do. Well, upon my word, perhaps they are too young and after all. 
Draft has got Charles brought in the veins. Instead of sour buttermilk. I never skipped before. I can only go up to 20. I skipped right into the cheeks, as sure as my name's Ben Weatherstaff. Just see that Robin's watching thee. Aye, he'll be following thee to find out what drop is. The curiosity will be death of thee if thou doesn't watch out. You showed me where this was hidden yesterday. You ought to show me the door today, but I don't believe you know. Right, well, now, that's the long walk, long way. Let's go down here. I don't know what they want with this part of the garden, Mr. Rocks. There's nothing to see here, nothing at all. Whoever's well, stuff, when I inspect the garden on a Saturday, I likes to do it thorough. You know, Mr. Craven's returning shortly. I want to have everything in order. Ah, Mr. Craven never comes down this way. He knows there's no need. It's my responsibility just the same. This ivy, no. It needs trimming. No, it don't. And I say it does. T'other end's trimmed neat enough, but all the rest of this graceful tangle. It looks as if it hasn't been touched for years. No more it haven't, and no more it's going to be. That's where Mr. Craven wished it, and that's how it's going to stay. I think you talk very wild sometimes. Very wild indeed. Ah, I understand things when they're a bit wild. Gets a bit wild myself sometimes. The ivy's not been touched for years. I think you do know, Robin. Roses are dead. You're alive. But you can't breathe.
do this every day. I'll let you all breathe. I promise. Two pieces of pie and two helps of rice pudding. Oh, Mother will be pleased when I tell her what skipping rope's done for thee. Martha? Yes, miss? What are those white roots that look like onions? Oh, they're bulbs. Lots of spring flowers grow from them. Little ones, well, they're snowdrops and crocuses. And big ones are narcissus and daffies. Dickon, he's got a whole lot of them planted in Arbiter Garden. Does Dickon know all about them? Pooh, our Dickon can make a flower grow out of a brick wall. Do bulbs live for a long time? I mean, for years and years, if nobody helped them. Well, their things is helps themselves. If you don't trouble them, they work away underground and they'll spread out and have little ones. I wish the spring was here now. I want to see all the things that grow in England. You're off asleep. It's all fresh air you've been having. I'll get your bed turned down. Martha? Yes, miss? Has the scullery maid had too thick a gain today? What makes you ask? Because as I was coming along the corridor before tea, I heard that crying again. Just as we heard it the other night. There isn't a wind today, so it couldn't have been the wind. Hey, what are you going go listening at corridors? Mr Craven would be that there angry, there's no knowing what he might do. I wasn't listening. I just heard it. That's three times. Oh, I'll go and get your can of hot water and I'll start undressing. This is the strangest house anyone ever lived in. I know that, Miss Mary. Did you get my letter? Aye, that's where I come. I brought tools, they're in the bag. Take that, Dickon. I do want to see them. These are real good and strong as strong they are. Rick? Oh? There's a fork too. Look. Yes, I like that best of all. Now about these seeds, Miss Mary. Do you know how to get ground ready for planting? No, I don't know anything at all. Well, there's all sorts here, and they have to go in at different times. There's stocks and poppies, wallflowers, and sweet williams. Eh, they're grand they are. Do you think that the flowers will look as beautiful as these pictures on the packets? I don't see why not. Flowers grow wonderful when you treat them right. See here, I'll let them dig the earth over. Where's the garden? That's got a bit of garden, haven't they? Won't they get there a bit? I don't know anything about boys. Could you keep a secret if I told you one? It's a great secret. I don't know what I should do if anyone found out. I think I should die. <laughs> I'm keeping it secrets all the time. If I couldn't keep secrets from the other lads, secrets about fox cubs, and birds' nests, they'd be not safe on more. I can keep secrets. I've stolen a garden. It isn't mine. It isn't anybody's. Nobody wants it or cares for it. Nobody ever goes in it. Perhaps everything in it is dead already. I don't know. But nobody has any right to take it from me when I love it and they don't. They've been letting it die, all shut up by itself. Hey. I've nothing to do. Nothing belongs to me. I found it myself and I got into it myself. Where is it? Come with me and I'll show you. Eh, hey, it's a queer, pretty place. It's like as if a body's in a dream. Oh, listen, 
It's long past my dinner time. I forgot all about it. My dinner's easy to carry about with me. It's often this note but bread. But got a fine slice of bacon with it today. Have something to miss the on. Nay, Mrs. Medlock, calm down. She can't be far away. It's all very well for you to say, calm down, Ben Weatherstaff. You're not responsible for the child. What am I going to say to Mr. Craven if she's lost for good? You'd better get the other gardeners to have a good look round. Uh, aye, I will. I never thought to see this place. Did you know about it? Martha told me the gardeners no one ever went in. Eh, it's a lovely tangle, isn't it? It'll be the safest nesting place in England. No one ever coming here. And all these rose bushes still building. Will there be any roses? Can you tell? I thought perhaps all the rose trees were dead. No, not them. Not all of them. Look here at this thing. It's as wick as you and me. Wick? Aye, it's live. I'm glad it's wick. I want them all to be wick. Eh, hey, with a little care, there should be fountains of roses here this summer. Now let's get on with clearing the snowdrops, Miss Mary. Why, who did this patch? I did. I thought they said they didn't know what about gardening. I don't, but they were so little and the weeds so thick, so I just tried to clear around each one. You were right. A gardener couldn't have done it better. Hey, where's that Robin is just calling us? He's Ben Weatherstars, but I think he knows me a little too. Hi, he's a friend of yours. Look at him now. He's a saying, Canada, see you, chap. My, but there's a lot of work to be done. Will you come again another day and help me? I'll come every day if they want me to. Rain the shine. It's the best fun I ever had in my life. Shut up here and waking up a garden. But let's not make it tidy. It wouldn't seem like a secret garden if it was tidy. It's a secret, right enough. But it seems to me as if someone has sides Robin has been in since it was shut up. But the door was locked and the key was buried. I know. But it looks as if a bit of pruning's been done later than ten years ago. It's a puzzle. Dickon, are there any flowers that look like bells? Well, there's Canterbury bells and Lizette at Valley. Let's plant some of those. Because there's a rhyme about cockle shells and silver bells. Oh, that. Mistress Mary, quite contrary. But the contrary. I knew some children in India who said I was. I hated them. I like you, Dickon. That makes five people I like. What, <laughs> but five? Who's to the four? Martha and John, the Robin and Ben Weatherstaff. Does thou like me? Aye, that it does. And so does Robin, I do believe. That's two, then. That's two for me. None of the gardeners have seen her, Mrs. Medlock. Where on earth have you two been? Why didn't you report to me half an hour ago? We thought we'd better have a thorough search first, Mrs. Medlock. Oh, that child's more trouble than all the rest of the place put together. I would not have thought that, Mrs. Medlock, from all accounts of what rest place is like. What may you mean by that, Ben Weatherstaff? Thou knows very well what I mean. I've got patience with you. Standing here arguing at a time like this. John. John, can you swim? Oh, I, I can swim. Then you'd best hurry down to the lake. Don't be daft, Mrs. Medlock. Why should she go falling in the lake? It's shallow at Tedges anyway. What's good at John jumping and swimming about in it? There were no but ducks and water when I passed it ten minutes ago. Well, go down again. And do use your eyes this time. Uh. Miss Mary! Miss Mary! Miss Mary! Oh, Dickon, I must go. Whatever happened to you, you would never tell. If thou were a missile thrush and the show me the nest, 
Do you think I'd tell anyone? That's as safe as a missile thrush. <laughs>